Hey, FKBC EM. It's uh, PJ again. We were going through Matthew 5, I believe, for this week. I pray that this would be an amazing week. Uh, this week, the commentary is not as thorough as it was uh, last week. Chapter 5, I believe. Uh, week 4 in the commentary um, in Bible study. And so if you have an ESV study Bible or access to some notes, uh, it might help. Or if you watch the sermon series that I just got through on the Sermon on the Mount, that might help a little bit too. Hopefully, uh, we'll all be on the same page. Uh, but tonight, questions are great. Uh, just really, really hope that we can focus on, you know, why Jesus would actually give the Sermon on the Mount. We know that we're not saved by the law. And we also know there's a parallel account to this Sermon on the Mount where a teacher, a great teacher, would go up a mountainside and proclaim some amazing things. We remember Moses as he gave the law on a mountainside and we're told later that the Israelites finally realized actually a man named Paul made it very clear uh, that you can't be saved by the law. And so why did this law be given? Well we think about the timing of the law. When it was given, it was given right before the Israelites would enter into the promised land. And we know that the promised land, it's not a representation of everlasting life. It's not a representation of heaven. But it's figurative and literal. For these people will literally be there. But the lessons they would learn need to be remembered by Christians, uh, followers of God, followers of Christ throughout history. And so we need to take the law very seriously because it tells us how we should live in the land in order to prosper. And here Jesus would open up by saying, blessed are those. So remember when you see this phrase, it's not just saying, okay, this is the way that you're going to be saved. No, it's saying that this is how you will live if you are saved. And if you look at just the basic tenets in the Sermon on the Mount, they're amazing. Because you realize that if you actually follow these things, there would be peace in the land. If you think about prosperity, if you think about success, think about prosperity and success overall with God's people. If we're able to forgive, if we're able to have mercy, if we're able to pursue righteousness, even if we're going to be persecuted and ridiculed as a result. Think of how God's people, think of how the kingdom would truly prosper. And I pray we would not just read this chapter. It's a very, very important chapter in Christian life. Whether it be in our own community, if there's areas where we need to forgive. Would you sit with your small groups? Would you sit uh, with your fellow teachers? If you're watching this yourself, if you haven't let go of you know, just certain things that have happened in your life, truly let go Will there truly be prosperity in the land? Especially those of you who are leaders. If you're thinking about victorious Christian living and we're not able to let go of our anger, if we're not able to fight lust and, and call it lust, what do we do? I pray, again, this is not like some moral code where if we do these things, life will be better for me. It's really saying something bigger here. What does it look like to be a follower of Jesus Christ? And I pray that would be the number one question you would ask uh, tonight in your small groups. What does it really look like to follow Jesus Christ? That cost is high, like we talked about before. One of the big things here, as always, it is. It's about not being angry with our brothers and sisters and it's about not holding grudges and retaliating it's about loving our enemies think about these things really really think about these things if there's unresolved uh, broken relationships in your life especially with people that you see week in and week out especially if those people are in church community I would ask that you would have mercy you would forgive and trust that repentance would come through the love that you show. Um, and that you would truly in your heart not just say, oh, I'm over that, but truly, truly 
understand forgiveness, that we can move forward together as a community and grow as the body of Christ. All right, have a great, amazing uh, Friday night. And uh, I'll try to update Shin with some resources during the week too. God bless you. Stay safe. Let's get through this together.